Now you avoided the turn on delay, then you should now look at what is the modulation response of the system, what is the small signal response and how do I now calculate the small signal response? We did this for uh, LED, the same procedure you have to do it for the laser. Okay. Uh, how did we do this for LED? We said the current in the system is IB plus, uh, we did what is called as the small signal analysis, small signal harmonic analysis. How do you do this? We say that the current is harmonic and it is small signal meaning that this IM is very small when compared to IB, the modulation is a small signal modulation. So, corresponding to this around the bias around this I B you are giving an I M which is e power j omega t. What is the consequence of having this I M in the system? What immediately changes? Remember your goal is to find the transfer function of the system and what is the transfer function? output power in the presence of modulation divided by output power in the absence of modulation, right. Your goal is to find of find h of j omega mod of h of j omega which is p out in the presence of modulation divided by p out at 0. So, how do I go about doing this? I say there is a current modulation. What is the immediate consequence? How is the system going to respond the moment you have a current modulation? The carrier density will start oscillating. So, n becomes n b plus n m e power j omega t and what is the consequence of carrier density oscillation? The photon numbers will start oscillating. P becomes P b plus P m e power j omega and how do I do the small signal analysis? I have to substitute each of this in my rate equations. The difference here is that it is slightly more complicated than in the LED because in LED you had only one rate equation, you had only the job of substituting this n equal to nm e power j omega t into the photon uh, sorry the carrier density equation. But here in this uh, laser diode can I ignore the photon density? I cannot ignore the photon density, right. So, I have to substitute in the photon density equation also. So, this is the carrier density. So, we are going to go through this exercise. So, this is algebra. So, I am going to quickly write down the steps of this algebra. Remember my n equal to this is my model n b n m e power j omega t where n m is the modulation it is small. I is or instead of i we have j. So, this is j is j b plus j m e power j omega t and my photon number is p b plus p m e power j omega t. So, d n by d t is j by q d n by tau c minus g p. This is the same as I cannot put this as 0 because it is not 0 anymore d n by d t is having an oscillation right. So, j by q d n by tau c and I need to write explicitly this because here is my n and that n is changing as a function of time. So, I cannot just write it as a g, the g is not a constant. So, I am going to use one more notation here because I do not want to keep writing this term everywhere. So, I am going to write this as d n by d t is equal to j by q d I will strongly urge you keep writing this along with me. I call it as gn. This thing I am calling it as gn. This is just to avoid writing these terms again and again n minus n naught times p and my dp by dt is gp. So, g is now g n into n minus n naught p this is g p. Uh, it also increases because of uh, spontaneous emission 
and it decreases because of loss in the system. I mean, there is nothing new I have written here. Okay, so we are operating above threshold. So can we ignore RSP? We can ignore RSP, but we'll just take it forward as far as possible and drop it at the last moment because any effect due to that in the lifetimes, if it is there, we want to carry it forward. Now, what do we want to do in this equation? I'm going to substitute now um, this. Okay, so the differential of this with respect to t is. Um, j omega p m e power j omega t is equal to g n n is uh, n b plus n m e power j omega t minus n naught and p is p b plus p m e power j omega t plus r s p minus p b plus p m e power j omega t divided by tau. So, we are going to treat this n b minus n naught together and this separately. So, we are going to split this first term as g n n b minus n naught plus g n n m e power j omega t because one is one of them is constant the other one is time varying. So, we are going to split the time varying parts. So, this will be g n n b minus n naught times p b this is this term multiplied by this term you will also have g n n b minus n naught p m e power j omega t. I am just taking this product now. Then I am going to do this plus g n n m e power j omega t p b. I am just multiplying term by term here. And there is also a multiplication term which involves n m e power j omega t and p m e power j omega t. I am going to drop that because small signal linearized analysis. So, n m is small, p m is small. So, the product is much smaller. So, I am going to ignore that. Okay? So, that is one assumption we are doing here. Uh, plus R s p minus p b by tau p minus p m e power j omega t by tau p. Now, if you look at these terms, you see this DC parts g n n b minus n naught uh, RSP p b by tau p. What do they correspond to? They will look in the they are looking at the same form as this one. And just at the bias current, these terms must be equal to this should reduce to 0 right because this plus this minus this is this plus this minus this when p is equal to p b and n is equal to n b at the bias current and bias point is like a steady state point. So, that should reduce to 0. So, what is left is only the time varying parts and in the time varying parts, each of these time varying part is having an e power j omega t. So, you equate only the uh, phasor part of it, right? You can drop the t power oscillation part of it. So, you get j omega p m is equal to g n n b minus n naught p m plus g n n m p b minus p m divided by tau p. Can you identify 1 by tau p in any of these? Of course, this has 1 by tau p, but you know that you remember 
P was equal to we wrote uh, 1 by tau P minus G in steady state. And we said this G is of course, G is equal to G n into n minus uh, n naught. And we said the largest value that G can take is 1 by tau P. So, this G n into n B minus n naught, n B should be must, must be equal, what would it be, what would be n B? Photon density at the bias current and what is that value? Beyond threshold, what is n? n t h. Beyond threshold, we said it is going to get clamped at n t h. So, this is actually n t h. And because this is n t h, g n into n t h minus n naught and you have crossed the threshold, you are above threshold, which means this term, which means this term is nothing but p m divided by tau p. All right, because the g above threshold is corresponding to n minus n. This is n t h minus n naught, and you cannot have it above that. So this number is almost close to one by tau p, which means that I can simply cancel out these terms, and I get a very nice, uh, very nice uh, relation now. Uh, j omega p m is equal to g n p b n m. This looks like a simple algebraic relation, but look at the consequence of this. What does this equation tell you? This tells you that whenever I have a current that is modulated as j m, the amplitude of that modulation is j m, I get a photon density modulation n m around n b and I can directly correlate my photon density modulation which is the same as intensity modulation or the power modulation as proportional to n m. So, my p m is equal to g n p b n m of course, there is a j omega which actually tells you some phase shift. It is not happening simultaneously, there is a phase shift between the two. And the beauty is as I increase my bias current, sorry, as I increase my uh, PB, PB is what? The bias photon density. How can I increase my bias photon density? By increasing the bias current. So, as I increase my bias current, my bias photon density increases and my ability to translate n m to p m actually increases, that efficiency increases. Okay. So, so this is not done yet, we have still to find out what is p n at omega because I still have some n m which is sitting here which I do not know what my response is going to be. So, I still need to solve for n m. So, the homework for you is substitute this now in this equation. So, we substituted this in the photon density equation. I want you to substitute uh, these small signal modulations in the carrier density equation. So, where all will you substitute? You will substitute at here, then you will substitute here because it is JB plus JTH, then you will substitute here and then you will substitute here and then you will substitute here. And there must be some DC terms which may go to 0, but what you are interested is in the AC term. In that AC term, use this relation also and find out what is H of j omega. So, you will get something in terms of n m, but now you change your n m in terms of p m because that is what you want. You want p m at omega divided by p m at omega equal to 0. So, substitute this and then try to derive this h, h of j omega, we will start from that point tomorrow. Okay. So, today we are starting to uh, derive the modulation response and our goal is to prove that it is going to be faster than uh, tau c.
tau c was what was a modulation there is no tau c in the picture yet right because you see the rsp got cancelled even though we had used right so that got cancelled so there is no tau c or tau radiative or tau non radiative it is going to get decided by something else now right so substitute in this and we can derive the h of j omega. Thank you.